That piano you quit at age 12? Turns out, it permanently upgraded your brain in ways scientists are just discovering. Maybe you took violin lessons for a few years. Or played guitar in high school, then stopped. Most people think quitting an instrument means a lack of discipline. Proof they couldn't finish what they started. But neuroscience shows that your failed attempt actually built a supercomputer inside your head that non-musicians simply don't have. Even if you never became a musician, even if you forgot every song, even if that instrument is collecting dust, your brain is fundamentally different and smarter. And it explains why you've always been different. Part 1. The Eight-Lane Highway when Harvard researchers put musicians in brain scanners, they found something dramatic. Musicians have a physically larger bridge between their brain hemispheres. This structure is called the corpus callosum, your brain's superhighway. Most people have a two-lane road connecting the logical left brain and the creative right brain. Musicians? They've got an eight-lane highway. Information flows faster. Signals cross instantly. Both sides work together in perfect sync. Imagine you're in a heated meeting. The logical left brain analyzes the data. The emotional right brain reads the room's tension. Most people switch between these. Look at data. Then look at faces. Back to data. You? You spot the error in the data. And the rising tension in the room. Simultaneously. That is the musician's advantage. And it pays off. A Stanford study tracked thousands of professionals over 20 years. Musical training was a stronger predictor of success in complex fields than IQ or education level, engineering, business, medicine, scientific research. And this change is permanent. Even if you stopped playing 20 years ago, that highway is still there. Part 2. The Social Superpower A Northwestern University study found something counterintuitive. Musicians process language significantly better than non-musicians, even though music isn't language. Why? Both use the same cognitive systems. Pattern recognition, timing, auditory processing, predictive sequencing. When you learn music, you train your brain to detect subtle patterns in sound, to predict what comes next, to understand structure and deviation. This transfers directly to human communication. You pick up emotional cues others miss. You detect patterns in how people speak. Confidence. Honesty. Anxiety. Deception. You learn foreign languages faster. You understand complex arguments better because you hold multiple threads simultaneously. Ever notice you can hear when something's off in a conversation? When someone's tone doesn't match their words? When there's tension beneath the surface that others don't catch? That's your musical training. You're reading the music of human communication. This is why musicians make exceptional negotiators, therapists, and leaders. They don't just listen to what you say. They hear how you say it. The pitch. The pace. The pauses. While others focus on words, you're reading the emotional score beneath the conversation. Schopenhauer said, music is the universal language. He meant, you can hear what people don't say. Part 3. Why this works. Music forces your brain to do something almost nothing else requires. Integrate multiple sensory systems simultaneously, in real time. Visual, auditory, motor, memory, emotion. Your brain synchronizes all of these at once. Sports train gross motor skills. Math trains logic. But nothing demands the millisecond fine motor precision combined with real-time abstract symbol decoding like music. Stanford researchers measured executive function, your ability to plan, maintain attention, hold information in working memory, and switch between tasks. 
the cognitive skills CEOs and top performers rely on. Musicians scored in the top percentile. Not because they're inherently smarter, but because music physically trained their brains to coordinate complex processes. Carl Jung talked about integrating the opposites. Logic and emotion, structure and creativity. Musicians do this automatically. Every time they play. Part 4. The Permanence But is this permanent? Here's the neuroscience reality. Your brain usually shrinks as you age. Gray matter decreases. Neural connections weaken. Processing speed slows. But musicians' brains fight back. The areas controlling coordination, sound processing, spatial awareness, and decision-making don't just stay the same. They grow stronger. The neural pathways you built become permanent architecture. MIT brain imaging shows structure changes visible after just six months of consistent practice. And that structure becomes your brain's savings account. Here's the proof. A Harvard study followed 10,000 people over 40 years, tracking cognitive decline as they aged. Musicians had 60% lower risk of cognitive decline and dementia. Their brains maintained plasticity longer into old age. They preserved memory, reasoning, and processing speed better than any other group studied. Why? Music training builds what neuroscientists call cognitive reserve. Your brain develops backup pathways. If some neural routes deteriorate with age, others compensate. That instrument you learned 30 years ago? It's protecting your mind right now. Not metaphorically. Literally. This isn't just about being smart now. It's about protecting who you are 30 years from now. So if you ever felt like quitting music was a mistake, or that you wasted those years of lessons, you didn't. Your brain is fundamentally upgraded. Permanently. And here's what matters most. Consistency beats intensity. You don't need to become a virtuoso. 20 minutes a day of musical practice creates more lasting brain changes than occasional intense sessions. The pathways strengthen through repetition, not heroic effort. So dust off that piano. Not to play Carnegie Hall, but to engineer a better brain. Your younger self already did the hardest part. Don't let that go to waste. You didn't quit music. You were just constructing the foundation. Now go build the rest of the house. If this changed how you see your past or your potential, let me know in the comments. And subscribe to The Logic Room for more insights, where philosophy meets neuroscience to solve real problems.